that it was prepared for. Amen. It was prepared for. There had to be some preparations made. And I, I, I want to, if I could title the message anything today, it would be Hungry for Revival, Start the Fire. Amen. We're going to go to 1 Kings, the 17th chapter. 1 Kings, the 17th chapter. This is a familiar scripture, but if you'll allow me this morning, God is going to show us some things through this today. 1 Kings 17, beginning in the 8th verse. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, and this is Elijah, saying, Get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. Amen. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal and a barrel and a little oil and a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and thy son. You may be seated. We're going to read the rest in a minute. I want to go back to verse 8 there. Elijah, at, at this point in time, there was a drought. And he had been um, at the brook, and the brook had dried up in the wilderness, and God said, Get up. And go to Zarephath. That's where this, this story begins. He said, get there. He said, I've commanded a widow woman to sustain thee. And we've got to keep in mind that Elijah did not know who she was. So he didn't know what she looked like. He had no idea what, uh, uh, who the lady was. Or else God would have said, I have commanded so and so to sustain you. But he said, a widow woman. Well, how many widow women could have been in this city? There could have been a lot of widow women. So the, the first thing is when Elijah came to the gate, it says when he came to the gate of the city, he saw her gathering sticks. And this just spoke to me when I read that. It spoke to me. And, and, and God just right where I was, I mean immediately, he spoke to me and he said, she would not die without using the last crumb that God had given her. She would not turn loose of the faith that I still have. It ain't much. It's not much. I don't have much left. I only have this much left. She could have sat in her house and said and whined about not enough. She could have sat in there and whined about, well, it's not going to do me any good to cook this cake because when this one is gone, we're going to die anyway. How many of you know that's the attitude we have? Well, it's not going to do any good to do this anyway because nothing ever changes. Right. Amen. She could have done that, but no, Elijah saw her gathering sticks. And can you imagine there was such a famine, people were dying left and right. This thing had gone on for three and a half years. There was people dying. Cattle were dying. All, all type of livestock and everything was dying. People's livelihoods were gone. And above that, she is a widow woman who has no provision except what her two little hands can provide. And now God has said, I'm going to send you a prophet and I want you to feed him. And you don't have anything but crumbs. God had already spoken to her. And she's gathering sticks. And he saw this. And so he knew that she was the one. Can I tell you today, if we want to have revival, we got to prepare for it. We need to stop using excuses. Amen. For not coming to church. Already making plans not to be here because you'd rather have something else to do. Amen. If you want revival, amen, you'll have to prepare for it. I want to prepare. When, when farmers go out to sow seed, they don't go out there and throw it on hard stony ground that hasn't been plowed up. Amen. When the word is deposited, you need to have that hard plow. 
plowed up, amen, through prayer and fasting and preparation for revival they come expecting. Amen. amen. Verse 11 and 12. I want, I want to kind of break this, this thing down in a couple of different ways here. Elijah saw her hunger. Are you hungry for God? Or have you lost your hunger for God? Elijah saw that she was hungry. They were hungry. Yeah. Verses 11 and 12. And she was going to fetch it. He called her and said, bring me, I pray, the morsel of bread in thy hand. She said, I don't have a cake. Notice she didn't say she didn't have any meal. A lot of times we're looking, looking past what we have. Amen. She's trying to look for the cake, but God said there is some meal in your barrel. Amen. You've got what it takes to bake a cake, but you're worried about the cake itself. Don't worry about all the ingredients. I will give you the ingredients when it's time, but you've already got what you need. If you've got a piece and a part and God means for you to bake a cake with it, he'll Rest, amen. Whatever it is, hallelujah. Amen. Verse number 11 and 12, he saw her hunger. Verse number 15. We're going to read these here. Let's start at 14. I'm sorry. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not. Neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord which he spake by Elijah. Verse number 15, he saw her obedience. She was hungry, but she was still obedient in her hunger. Amen. Um, I, I, I began to look at this and we're going we're gonna to get over into to the other half of this but after the miracle of provision was made some time passed have you ever had a season in your life where God made provision for you and boy you just on fire during that time God let me tell you what God did he made provision and he did this and he did that and after some time passes, it is to be old news. We kind of forget how bad the situation was. We get complacent. And we get to where we're kind of lazy on God. Amen. We get to where our faith kind of grows weak because we're just, it's just everyday mundane, everyday life. And some time had passed because the Bible says, and he and uh, she and he and her house did eat many days. I don't know how long that was. But it was long enough, amen, that she got complacent. Then trouble showed up. Trouble will always show up, amen. Whether you're saved or whether you're not saved. Whether you know God or whether you don't. But I'd rather face trouble with God. Amen. I'd rather have a bad day with God as a good day with the devil. Anytime. Amen. I would rather. Amen. But all of a sudden, in her satisfied state, everything's going good. Everything's going fine. Then all of a sudden, verse number 17. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. And she said to Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Are you come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom, and carried him up into a loft where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourn, or who I'm, who I'm staying with, by slaying her son? And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived. Somebody say revived. What are we having?
and this week a revival. Amen. It derives from the word revived. Amen. You can't revive something that don't need reviving. We need reviving. Amen. And she, her son, was revived when the when the breath and the spirit of God came back into him. Amen. And Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him unto his mother and Elijah and said and, and Elijah said, See, thy son lives. Now I want you to I want this next verse right here is where it's at. And the woman, this is the widow woman said to Elijah, Now, by this, I know that thou art a man of God, and that the word of the Lord in thy mouth is truth. Yes. It wasn't enough that God kept her from death to cause her to believe that this was a man of God. And that the word of God in his mouth was the truth. But when God kept her through death. Yes. 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 Oh, when God keeps us from stuff, right. yeah. it's easy to get complacent. Oh, when he stops it. Oh, we want to dance and have a time. And let me just tell you what God did. But let me tell you something. Sometimes he don't keep you from it. He keeps you through it. And can I tell you something? If you want to have revival, amen, you find you somebody who's been through the fire. You find somebody that's been through something. They are hungry for God. Because when God, she said, now I know. It wasn't enough that I'm on starvation and I'm out gathering sticks, amen, to, break, to, to bake one cake. She was preparing to die. And God showed up and filled her bear and filled her cruise of oil and sustained her all of this time. How many times does God sustain us? How many times? But what will it take to get our attention when God all of a sudden doesn't keep us from? All of a sudden she looks at Elijah and says, what name? Man of God. Read it. That's what it says. She was upset. Have you come to call all of my sin to my... You know that's how it is when things show up in our lives. Amen. Because Satan will lie to us and tell us if God was who he is, he wouldn't let all this happen. What now, man of God? Did you come to bring my sin to remember? Am I being punished for everything I've ever done? Can I tell you something? When it's under the blood, it's under the blood. And there ain't no more punishment. The Word says there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit of God. So Satan was lying to her. Oh, in, in her frank state of mind, her son is dead. And Elijah don't understand either. But he knows God. He knows God. And he knows that if God speaks to that soul, it will become living and breathing. Can I tell you today, I don't know your circumstance. I don't know what you've been through. I don't know what you will go through. All I know is like Elijah, you put it in the hands of God. You let God speak to that thing. And if it needs revived, it will be revived. Amen. There's no way that it cannot be revived when the breath of God has spoken over that thing. Amen. And she said, now by this, now I know. She had to go through. I was one of them. <laughs> Amen. Show me. I want to see. But she said, now, I know. See, God knew there was still a little something going on there. She wasn't fully persuaded. She wasn't fully persuaded. 
until she was kept. Through death. Death knocked at her door. And God closed it. And then he came back again. And God kept her through. And revived her son again. Hallelujah. This time it wasn't food she needed. She didn't need food. She needed revival. She didn't need food. Amen. She needed revival. The most powerful testimonies you will ever hear are from people who were not kept from. But kept from. Come on. If I'm kept from it, I can't tell you nothing about it. All right. Come on. But ask me what he kept me through. I don't care nothing about talking to you about what he kept me from. Thank yeah. God, glory yeah. to God for that. But I don't know nothing about going down that road. Yeah. All but the roads That's I've been right. down. What he kept me through and brought me out on the other side and revived yeah. my spirit within me and revived my faith within me. And I look back and saw where I should have died. <laughs> where I should have been caught. Where I should have been locked up. Where I should have been in a mess. Where I should have been suffered lost. Where I should have been condemned. Where I should have died. Amen. And God showed up and slammed the door. And said not to death. Because I see what she will be. Not what she is. I see what he will be. Not what he is. different. It's going to make me talk different, walk different, think different. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Maybe God didn't keep you from the hurt or from the sickness or from the failures. You need a word. You need a touch. You need a refreshing. You need a revival. Praise you, God. I believe that God would have me tell you this morning. Start getting your sticks. Start getting your sticks. Because life is walking into your life. Start gathering sticks. Revival is coming. When she was gathering sticks, she thought she was preparing to die. But my God, she was preparing to stare death in its face and have the God of all glory and all earth to come down on her behalf and take death by the throat and say, not today. And give her back her son. Living. And breathe. Some of you prayed for your kids and your grandkids until it seems like the devil just tries to take every bit of it. Let me tell you something today. As long as there's a life, as long as they are breathing, as long as and honey, in this case, it don't matter. It ain't over till God says it's over. Amen. He he is the giver of life. Amen. Satan cannot take it without his permission. Hallelujah. He is the giver of life. Start gathering your sticks. How do you do that? I want you this week, every day this week, I want you to declare we have a revival. We're going to have it personally. We're going to have it corporately. We're going to have it citywide. Amen. We are going to have revival. There's going to be things happen this week in this revival. You can write it down. Some of you got to pay the one, write it down, put the date down. There's going to be some things I'm telling you right now. Preached a message one time that said, don't sit down and cry. Prophesy. Amen. Call them dead bones back to life. Let God breathe on that thing and bring it back to the place where it needs to be. Amen. Some folks need to prophesy to themselves and say we're going to have revival. This week, it's on the way. I'm gathering my sticks. I'm fasting and I'm praying and I'm believing. I'm going to gather my sticks. I will not make excuses. I have a little strength. Like the little she had. Don't you refuse to die spiritually just because you ain't got the thread left. Say, I'm going to gather these sticks and I'm starting fire. The theme of this revival is fresh fire revival. Oh, I need a fresh fire. A fresh anointing. Prepare yourself. Come to the house of God. Start the fire. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. We, we preached last week on get focused. Get focused this week. Oh, and Satan will try to do everything he can to get you focused off. Oh, stay focused and say, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm getting my, I'm getting my revision. I'm going to help revival. I'm coming. Revival is coming. Amen. When she looked at him and said, now, I know, I believe it cleared it up for Elijah. And don't you know, he probably thought in his mind, man, I've been staying here all this time. We've been eating good. You was about to die. You was on starvation. Yeah. You ever been close to starvation? Yeah. You ever been to the cupboards and looked and thought, Lord, have mercy. We got Kool-Aid and cereal. <laughs> Pour it in there and eat it. It ain't going to hurt you. <laughs> Keep you from starving. She was worried about the cake. And God said, You got me middle way? I am the cake. I am what you need. You got a little left? You got a little faith left? Oh, I can do something with that. Yeah, that's right. Refuse. To die when you've still got something left. Stand with us this morning. Revival is coming. 
Oh, just hold on. Revival is coming. How precious God is. How precious His Word 